You guys ever uh, watch a movie and through the entire movie you're thinking to yourself, okay, when, when is something going to happen here? And it never does? It's more or less what this movie's all about. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Happy Wax TV. So tonight we are talking about a movie called Wounds. It just came out on Hulu. And I sat down today and I watched it. And I'll tell you, I was excited to see this. It got recommended to me uh, by my friend Jay. He said it was uh, pretty good. So I was excited. But I'll tell you, um, like I didn't dislike this movie, but the entire time I was watching it, I was like, like, when the fuck is anything going to happen? <laughs> like, nothing really happens in this movie. Like, I mean, there's stuff that goes on. But, I, I mean, honestly, this movie could be open to massive discussion. I mean, really, as to what the fuck happened at the end. And just actually what is, is going on here. So, anyways, basically, a very quick synopsis. Uh, disturbing and mysterious things uh, begin to happen to a bartender in New Orleans after he picks up a cell phone left behind in... A bar, or his bar, I guess. So anyways, Army Hammer plays Will. Uh, he is the bartender at Rosie's. Uh, there is a scuffle that breaks out between uh, his friend Eric, who comes in with a bunch of his guys. They get in a fight. Um, Eric gets slashed across the face with a beer bottle. Um, doesn't really have anything to do at the beginning of the movie with the slash, but at the very end it does. But anyways, there's a, there's a group of four kind of, uh, I don't know, they're underage kids, but they're in the bar, okay? Anyways, during the scuffle, everybody gets out of there, and uh, one kid leaves his cell phone behind. So Will takes it home with them that night and unlocks it using, I mean, it's a pretty simple technique. You just look at the fingerprints on the screen. Anyways, he unlocks this thing, and um, it starts to, like, he goes through the phone, and he sees some pretty disturbing images of, of stuff that are on there. Well, later that night, the phone starts going off, right? And he says, I'm the bartender, I have your phone. And then the messages coming back are saying, help me, help me, you know, this and that sort of thing. And he doesn't know, really know what to do. But while this is going on, um, Carrie comes home, who's played by Dakota Johnson, his uh, girlfriend that they live with. And there's, there's um, you know, they're not getting along the best. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Will thinks she might be having an affair with her university teacher and then... You know, Carrie is wondering why he's got a cell phone, a girl, and all this sort of stuff. And so there's there's that kind of underlying story of their breakdown in this movie, I guess. And then Will also has um, a crush on one of the bar regulars who's also a friend, Alicia, who is played by Zazie Beetz. And she is just absolutely phenomenal in this movie. I love her in anything that she's uh, she's involved with. But yeah, I don't know, man. I just, you know, he... I don't know, he sees these images the next day when he gets up and then he sees the person that he was supposedly talking to on the phone asking for help dead through these images on the phone, right? So, like, okay, so I'm thinking, all right, first act, this is this is pretty cool, there's there's shit gonna happen, you know what I mean? And then the, the cell phone comes back and says, we've chosen you, right? But, so he, again, it's, it's, it's clouded in mystery. I know I'm kind of being all over the place with this review, but this movie was kind of all over the place. It's just... Like, lots of stuff happens in the movie, but there's no real payoff, you know what I mean? Like, we, we, we get it that he's got some sort of a curse on him from this phone because he listens to it and it makes these weird kind of fucking noises and screams and all this sort of stuff. And it almost looks like it possesses him or hypnotizes him, you know what I mean? And, he, and he's got that, but I, style, this style of movie drives me fucking bananas because it's like, Will doesn't want to give up what he's actually going through. And Carrie questions him on it all the fucking time because she thinks that maybe he's being unfaithful. I mean, all he has to do is fucking tell her the truth and they can work on this together, but he doesn't. You know what I mean? But he does give her the phone, but then he's all pissed off. And then later in the second act, she starts to investigate this phone because she sees the images too. And then he comes home a couple times and she's like investigated um, you know, this, this wounds, uh, books that are in the background of some of these pictures. And she's opened up this, this website that has this portal on it and she gets like mesmerized by it. And there's actually a scene there where she's actually been staring at this screen for hours so much though so that she's like soiled herself in the seat 
You know what I mean? And it's a pretty, well, actually one of the cooler scenes is the one time he comes home and she's just right zombified by this, by this, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, the, uh, the portal that she's looking at on the computer screen. So he picks her up and puts her in the bathtub and she sinks into the water and the water just goes black. It's almost like it, like it was possessing her and taking her over, but then it all got washed off. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was a pretty cool scene. So, but there's just not enough of that. I mean, there's un, 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 like tons of unanswered questions in this movie. Like the cell phone, when he has the cell phone and he's trying to return it, there's a black charger that keeps following him everywhere. You know what I mean? And he, he ends up throwing it out the, the window because he has this, this hallucination that he's covered in cockroaches, which were all throughout this movie. Like, I mean, like there's cockroaches everywhere in the bar, in this house. Like it, it has some point to this movie and I'm not sure if it's the creatures that come through the portal. I don't know if you've seen this movie, explain that to me, but the fucking cockroaches are everywhere. But he, anyways, he thinks he's got cockroaches all over him when he's driving to the police station to return the phone, throws it out the fucking window. And then these two girls in a charger get out and pick it up and then take it off. And I'm thinking, okay, but what's their fucking background? We never, we never really see or hear from them again, other than they, they text him and say that he's been chosen. Well, chosen for what? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, there's so many fucking unanswered questions, unless I just didn't get it, but I don't think so. I just, the, this movie is, it's just all over and it's, it's frustrating to watch because like even the ending, and I don't want to give the ending away, but I'm like sitting there watching it. I'm like, like, is this fucking guy possessed or not? Or you know what I mean? And then the thing about the movie is called wounds. So wounds that you get like on Eric, when he gets his face sliced or army hammer, gets this kind of, um, he has this rash growing under his arm and he's in a mirror and it, is it real or is it hallucination? But he has a wound open up on his, on his underarm here. You know what I mean? And it's all about these wounds being the portal to like another universe or something like that. There's a little, little background. They do give you that much. It's like a background that uh, Carrie is investigating in this book and it, it speaks about it a little bit, but there's just not enough there. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to invest in this movie but it just doesn't give you enough of a payoff to, to, to keep you, like you just want more. And I guess that's maybe the, what they were going for. I don't know. It didn't work for me though. Um, like I didn't hate this movie, but it's just like, it's just so unanswered. You know what I mean? And it's like, there's so many questions that you want answered. And I know I like movies that make you think, but there, there's just, they, they talk about some things and then it, it's never brought up again in the movie, right? So you're thinking, well, what about this? And what about that person? And what about this event? Like, it's just, I don't know, man. It's like they, they had a whole list of things that they wanted to try in this movie. And then they filmed them, put them in the movie, but then realized it probably wasn't going to work. So they scrapped it, but still left that scene in the fucking movie. Like I just, I don't know, man. It was frustrating. Um, it's directed by Babak and Vari. Uh, now I, I, as soon as I knew, as soon as I saw he was the director, I was excited because he did a movie that I loved called Under the Shadow. And I think that was his first feature length film. And if you haven't seen that movie yet, definitely check it out because it is fucking awesome. Like I, for his first like big screen, full length directorial debut was, was fucking an amazing. Under, Under the Shadow it's called and it was, it was killer, man. But this movie, I don't know. I don't know if like a studio got in the way or what, but this, I don't know, man. <laughs> it was just frustrating because nothing really got answered. And then, the big ending was frustrating because I had no fucking idea where what was going on. Like I, I, I had like a general idea, but there was no payoff there. It's just ended. So unless there's going to be a sequel to this, it almost felt like you were watching a TV show. Um, that's, that's what this movie felt like. It's just seemed like it was going to be like season one or episode one of season one. And they left all these unanswered questions and then throughout the season it was you know the questions were going to get answered but you don't do that in the fucking movie <laughs> you know what I mean or at least give some sort of a, a closure on some of these things they talk about but there's nothing there so I don't know keep your fingers crossed for a sequel and maybe it'll answer 20 of these questions that they bring up in this movie so or unless I'm just a fucking dummy and I couldn't figure it out if I am then let me know because I'd like some of these questions answered. So anyways, the movie's called Wounds. To give it a rating, probably give it a six. I mean, it, the, the acting's really good in it, but the story is just like, I'm thinking like, what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. So if you guys have seen it, 
let me know. You know what they should have done for wounds when they had wounds? They should have put a big question mark at the end of it because that's what this movie is. It's about a bunch of fucking questions that never get answered. So anyways, let me know what you think of this one. It's on Hulu right now, so check it out for sure. Um, if you've seen it, let me know what you thought of it and please fucking explain this stuff to me. And if you haven't seen it, do me a favor, go watch it and then come back and, and fill me in on what the fuck I just didn't get because uh, I'm still scratching my head about this one. So anyways, movie's called Wounds. Six out of ten for me. And until next time, guys, stay scared.